Many Australians think that loneliness only affects people 65 years and older. But the research shows it's actually highest amongst 18 to 24 year olds. FBI Radio 94.5, talking all about the friendship recession today. Aaron, take us through, what does this term actually mean? The friendship recession is basically that experience of having a decline in friends. I've come to a community radio station in Sydney where Gen Z volunteers Aaron and John run a weekly show. Radio 94.5. So Aaron, we just had a text come through on the text line. Yeah, so the text says, in the past two years, I've moved out of a share house, gotten married and started a family. And if you're not in a similar situation, it's incredibly hard for the friendship to stay relevant. What are some of the factors that are contributing to young people feeling lonely? I know a lot of people in that age bracket, in our age bracket, are very dependent on social media for interaction. And I think that plays into it so much. It can be generally confusing as a young person to figure out the difference between having a lot of friends and also feeling connected to a person. Yeah, I agree that people have big circles, but not a real sort of close group of people that they can rely on and trust, I think. Do you think the word lonely carries stigma or shame? I do find it's a real struggle for me to say that I'm lonely because it can just be like taken as a joke or it can be something that is not properly addressed. I think it's funny because I'm much more okay with saying I'm feeling super depressed, but I think that when it comes to saying I'm lonely, that feels weirder sometimes. One in two Australians say they don't want to be friends with someone who's lonely. It's a finding that Dr. Michelle Lim hopes to change. Loneliness is something that I see uh, really requires this destigmatization, similar to depression. While it's actually not a pathological condition, the way we actually perceive lonely people, the way we think about loneliness, is extremely negative at the moment. Two years ago, Aaron had a falling out with a friend and former housemate. As a result, she decided to cut ties with their shared social group. For a while, honestly, it made me feel like, like, oh my God, is there something wrong with me? Every 21-year-old is supposed to have so many friends and I'm just like here hanging out with my mum, you know? There was just like so much like shame I had to work through with it. After the friendship fallout, Aaron found it difficult to form new connections. I think that for a long time, I was worried that me being friends with this person said something negative about how I was, that, that I attracted that. I think not trusting myself to be friends with other people as well just meant that like I was continuing to isolate myself a lot. But even when I would hang out with people, kind of just being really trepidatious to get close with people or to be real with how I'm feeling or to express if I'm upset with someone. While Aaron works in social media marketing, in her personal life, she actually tries to avoid it and stay offline as much as possible. I think with being on social media a lot, it can be one of those social interactions where it doesn't really fill your cup very much. It, I think, can be this deceptive thing of feeling more socially fulfilling, or it can be in some ways more socially draining than like hanging out with a person, but be a bit less social. For Gen Zs, most communication takes place over text, so it's easier than ever to flake or cancel plans last minute. Flakiness is huge, but I think just this culture of not taking plans so seriously. I'm also not perfect, like I definitely cancel on people and I feel like I want to not be a hypocrite about it too. I've heard about an event that's bringing young people together face to face. I'm outside of a local cafe and bakery and they run these cake decorating and friend making classes. So I've invited Aaron to join me. Hi. Hey. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, are you ready for cake making? Yes, I'm so excited to get in here and decorate some cakes. Yes, it's going to be delicious too. The cafe is run by German expat Sina Klug and her partner. So we actually had a great success story last time um, for our first ever event. Um, by the end of the week, 
all the participants had a WhatsApp group together. They went to two different parties together and half of them went camping together. The only thing I'm wondering is why no one invited me to any of those parties. Tonight is less about learning a technique and more about making conversation. Did anybody come because you're like, you know what, I could have a bigger social circle? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it's really hard to make friends, to be honest, like I won't lie. Unless you do like a competitive sport where you're like constantly training together or you work with them. It's so hard to make friends as an adult, so it's good to do classes every once in a while, like see different groups of people and just make new friends and just learn a new skill while you're at it. You have on the table butter creams in different colours, you've got whipped cream. Sina knows what it's like to build a social circle from scratch. I think our idea came from me kind of moving to Australia from Germany in my mid-20s. I lost all my friends, my family and support system, just had a new start here. And I remember how difficult it was to meet people and start over. So we really wanted to make sure that we use this space, not just for baking, but also for human connection and to bring our community together. The cake-making icebreaker seems to be working. Aaron's hit it off with 20-year-old Amiko. I guess this is almost like a first step for me, like coming here, putting myself out there. Hopefully something good comes of it. <laughs> we always do something fun. I think everyone feels a bit lonely from time to time and everyone wants to connect. And I think that when you sincerely try and like do that, people are just actually really appreciative and that's a really lovely thing. So how have you found tonight? Is it what you expected? It's cuter than I thought it would be. I think it's very like, it feels a little bit like a movie in a way. Like it's just very sweet. <laughs> Okay, so everyone say vegan cake on one, two, three. Vegan cake. You cuties! <laughs> I love it! After the boxing of cakes and swapping of numbers, it's time to head home. Bye. Tonight was actually so much fun, and I feel like the cake decorating kind of took the pressure off everyone, you know? The conversation was flowing naturally. People were being really genuine. And a lot of them, including Aaron, walked away with new friends.